Back to another Swift tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about how you can pass data between two view controllers. So this is a topic that I get questions about quite a bit. People struggle with this concept mainly because they haven't seen an example. So we're going to be talking about two examples and implementing them, of course, to give you guys a solid foundation of how to do this. So as always, we're going to get started by starting up Xcode and creating a new project. We're going to stick with a single view application, call it whatever you'd like and save it wherever you want. We're going to call this, let's say, pass data and save it and expand your window to get started. After you've done that, make sure you smash that like button below for the YouTube algorithm. Helps the channel and the video a lot, and I really appreciate it. Let's expand Xcode to get started. So if you're not already familiar, uh, a view controller represents basically a screen in your application where something could be going on. You might have a list, some type of user interface. And generally, we have uh, several of these view controller screens to build our app. So how do we pass data between them, which seems to be a pretty critical part, right? Let's say you have a screen where the user enters something, and when they hit a button, let's say save, we want to go back to another view controller and show whatever they entered. Um, and that example that I just kind of spoke through is exactly what we're going to be doing. So if we just hit command R, we'll see this application builds and runs. It'll be an empty white application um, as soon as it loads here in just a second. Hopefully, Xcode's being slow. Oh, it's deciding to run on my phone, so let's actually run it on the simulator. So let's come up here and pick the 11 Pro Max simulator. And we should see it boot up here in just a second. While it's doing that, we're going to actually hop into the main storyboard. And we'll see that we have one view controller in here. And we'll also see as this app loads up, like so, we have an empty app. Let's ignore my antivirus pop-up. Cool. Okay. So the first thing we need to do is we're going to bring in a second view controller. And we're going to press have a button to present that view controller. If, uh, if you're not sure how to work with multiple view controllers, I've got a great video on that. Uh, feel free to also just follow along. So let's set a background color to this view controller. Um, let's make it, I don't know, let's make it black. And then let's come up here, find another view controller and drag it on in. And let's change the background color of this to a dark gray. Let's see, this works. And of course, to present this new controller, we're gonna have to put a button on our first controller. So let's grab a button. Put it on here like so and we'll call this button show other screen next we need to give this view controller a name and a class and we'll do that in this tab the storyboard id will be other and let's come up here and create a new file which will serve as the code for this class It'll be a Coco Touch class. And we're going to name this class. Let's call this class Other View Controller. We can leave this box unchecked and hit Continue, Enter. That creates this new file for us. We can delete this commented code that Xcode gives us. Let's head back to the main storyboard. Now, in here, we can specify the class for this other controller, and it'll be the new file we just made, other view controller. Now let's set up a function for our first view controller that will present this other controller. So let's come in here, delete this commented code, and let's create an IB action. And it's a function, and we'll do did tap button like so. We're gonna say let VC equals storyboard dot instantiate view controller with identifier the identifier is other and this is going to be as other view controller and of course what we can do now is present vc animated true 
And we're also going to do VC presentation style is full screen. And lastly, before we run it to see our two view controllers in action, let's go back and connect this function we just created to our button. And we should be able to see it in here. I guess not. So let's actually do it from up here. And it looks like we still don't have our um, our function in here. So let's go back to the class and see what we missed. So it's an IB action. We have a func that looks cool to me. Let's say command B to compile it. Sometimes Xcode does some funky stuff. And let's go back to this storyboard. Right click this again. And we should have a referencing action. But we don't. So something weird is going on. Let's try this once more. Let's right click this. Huh. Interesting. So bear with me one second while I figure out what I screwed up. Did I put the code in the wrong class maybe? Ah, that's why. That would make a lot of sense. We need to put this in our view controller class. And let's head back to our main storyboard and right click this and ah, there it is. Connected to our button. And we're gonna stick with touch up inside and hit command R to build and run this app. And I like to leave these little gotcha moments in. Um, they're a natural part of development and it's important to see that A, everybody hits them and B, how to fix it. So let's go ahead and hit this button and boom, we get a gray screen. Okay, so now we're gonna talk about what this video is actually about. That is passing data between the two screens. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a field on this screen and a label here and once we press a button on the screen, we are going to not only dismiss the gray screen, but we're going to update the label on the initial screen with whatever the text is in the field. So let's actually do that. Let's grab a label and throw it on here. And let's change the color to white and also apply some quick constraints to it. So we're going to make it white. We are also going to make it, let's see, 10, 10, 10. Let's make the height 200. We're going to center align the text. And we're going to make lines 0, which will have the text wrap onto n number of lines as need be if the text is long. Uh, we're also going to need to put a field on the screen. We are going to also apply constraints here. So we're going to do 20, 20, 20, and say 50. That looks good to me. Let's add a button on this screen as well. Once the user presses it, we'll actually have it send data between the screens. And we can call this, I don't know, save. So now we need outlets for each of these things. So we need an outlet for this UI label, UI text field, and UI button. Um, for the button, actually, we need an, an action. We don't actually need an outlet for it. So let's go and create those real fast. So in here, we're going to do IB outlet for a field. And it'll be a UI text field. Let's go to our other view controller. And in here, we're going to do IB outlet a label and it'll be a UI label and let's head on back to the storyboard and connect those outlets so let's come up here label to the label and let's come up here field to the field okay so the first way we're going to demonstrate passing data between uh, controllers is through closures, otherwise referred to as completion handlers. So right now, what we want to do is, once this decides to build and run, is we want to come to this screen, tap this, type something in here, and once we hit this button, we want to send this, whatever we typed, back to the black screen and show it in the label. So let's head to our other view controller. 
and do two things in here. The first one is add an action for that button. And in this one, of course, we want to dismiss the view controller with the animation. And let's say completion is nil. The other thing we want to do is add a property on here. And we're going to call it, um, let's call it completion handler. And this property is going to be of a type of a string. Um, let's just do string returning void. And this whole thing gets wrapped as an optional. So this is basically the signature of a function. So the reason we're going to do this is what we're going to do before we dismiss this controller is we're going to say completion handler. And we're going to pass in here uh, field dot text and notice text is string optional so let's come up here and change this to be string optional and if you're not following along that's totally fine i'm going to explain it so don't fret basically we've created a property that the first view controller can assign and before we dismiss this gray screen we're basically gonna call that function so if we head back to our first view controller what we're going to do in here is we're going to say vc dot completion handler. Oops. If it decides to pick up on the completion handler, vc dot completion handler. Let's see. What are we missing? Let's see. We're creating it as the other view controller. Let's hop back into here and see what we need to do. Let's make this public. Um, and we needed to assign it. So let's head back to this controller and do vc dot, there we go, vc dot completion handler equals basically this. So what we've done is before we present this controller, we're saying that there's a completion handler on the controller we're creating, and we're going to get text back in this um, closure as it's called. And because we know this text property thing is string optional, uh, we need to unwrap it before we assign it to the label. Uh, we don't have to, we can actually assign it directly even if it's nil. And the void here basically refers to the fact that there's no return statement in here. So what we can actually do is just say label.text equals text. And that should be good. It wants self in here. It's complaining about that. So let's build and run this and see what we get. So you can see we have the default label here. We're going to come in here and type in something longer. And we're going to hit save. And the first problem we have is we forgot to link the action to our button. So nothing happens. So let's head back to our storyboard and let's link that action to the save button like so and stick with touch up inside hit command R once more and let's do this one more time and hopefully we didn't miss anything let's type some stuff in here and hit save and look at that we not only dismissed the gray screen, but we also handed back to this black screen what we typed. So that's the first method of passing data between view controllers that I wanted to go over. The second method is also pretty straightforward, and uh, both of these methods are used in different use case scenarios, but I still want to demonstrate it because it is pretty cool. So we're going to go back to the other view controller, and we're going to get rid of this completion handler stuff as well as this let's go back to the first view controller and let's get rid of this and the way we're gonna send data now back through the uh back through between the two controllers is using notification center so notification center is a concept of one view controller observing for inbound notifications and the other view controller sending the notification with the entered string as a 
uh, payload of sorts. So you can think of it as an object. The way we do that is we can say notification center, whoops, notification center default, add observer, and we're gonna observe on self. We're gonna add a function that's gonna be called once the notification comes through. So we, we're gonna create that in just a second. And the notification is gonna be notification.name. Um, let's see, let's call it text. And the object is nil. Let's come down here and create a function that will be called when the notification comes through. And we need to do add objc for objective C func did get notification and we're going to do notification which is the actual parameter that will come through in here we're going to say uh, let text equals notification dot object as string And we're going to say label.text equals text. Cool. So that's this side of it. And we need to actually fill in the selector business. So what did we call it? We called it did get notification. So start typing that in. And it should auto complete for you. Now let's go back to the other controller. And we're going to actually send this notification when the person hits the save button. So we're going to say notification center default post and we're going to post with a name and I think we call the text and the object is going to be field dot text like so hit command R to build and run the app and we have our default label text. Let's come in here and hit this to show the new screen. Type in something different in here that we will send back. Hit save. And like so, we have the notification that was sent from here before the screen was dismissed. And in this first view controller, we grabbed it in the function that we created. Uh, the notification actually holds the string as the object, and you can actually send any kind of object with a notification, so it doesn't only have to be strings. And then we assign that text to our label. So that's the second example that I wanted to go through for how to send data between view controllers. Now, what's interesting about this approach that I'll highlight here is while the first approach was a one-to-one -one relationship where a view controller could call the completion handler, this notification uh, design pattern can be between one controller and several other controllers. So you could have one controller which sends uh, or posts, as Apple has called it, a notification. And you could have five other screens that are observing for it, and they can do something when they receive it. So it doesn't have to be a one-to-one. -one. But yeah, that about does it for this video. That's how you can pass data between one or more view controllers. So thank you so much for watching. Again, if you haven't done so already, hit that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. If you're new, welcome. Um, Daily Swift video, subscribe. And I'll catch you in the next video.